So Maggie, one of the trends we've been seeing is that more men are dying of COVID-19 than women. And I know you've been looking into this. So where in the world are we seeing more men die than women? And just how stark a difference is it? So we're seeing it just about everywhere. Not every single country is recording data on COVID deaths in a way that makes it easy to disaggregate male and female deaths. Uh, the US, for instance, um, doesn't record all of our deaths that way. So there's only a portion of them that we actually have sex data attached in a way that we can kind of go back and study it later. But there are several countries that are doing this kind of reporting and in pretty much all except two of them i think there were 35 different countries all except two of them had a higher percentage of men dying than women um and so it can be a very small in some countries it was like you know five percent more um but in some of them you would see like 75 percent of the deaths were men um, it just kind of varied a lot across the scale. So we know that this is happening. We know that it's fairly consistent and we can kind of assume that it's something that's happening just about everywhere. I know we don't always have the most accurate data on um, exactly the sex of, of people who have died in the United States, but do we have any indication of just how many more men are dying of COVID than women here? For the 31,000 odd deaths that we do have this data complete for right now, it looks like about 57% of the deaths have been in men. So what are some hypotheses for why this is happening? Well, so the researchers I talked to said that there's probably a bunch of different things going on. And some of those are associated with biological sex, with, you know, hormones, with uh, your genes. And some of those things are going to be associated with gender, with the way that, you know, individual people and society conceptualizes what male and female are supposed to be like and how they act that out. So both of these things are probably happening at once. And there are good examples of both that you can kind of find in scientific literature. What are some of the biological reasons that men might be dying more frequently than women of this disease? Well, some of it is uh, genetic. So we know that there are some 60, chromo like 60 genes that are located on the X chromosome that are associated with immune system function. And women have two X chromosomes. And also researchers told me that the genes that are associated with the immune system on the X chromosome seem to be active more frequently in women. So that's one thing that's probably going on somewhat here. And another thing is also hormonal. The um, estrogens are associated with higher functioning immune systems, while testosterone, androgen hormones, and also progesterone are associated with uh, lower functioning immune systems. Do we know how estrogen is boosting the immune system? Well, so we know that sex hormones have this kind of like lock and key mechanism that helps them get inside cells and do anything. Like that's the entire reason they can do their jobs. And it turns out that these sex hormones keys fit the lock on immune cells as well as the cells that they would need to, to do their jobs. So they can actually have an impact on the cells that make your immune system function. And we know that this is associated in women with kind of having a much more active immune system. So you can fight off disease a little bit easier. Um, and we women actually have a higher response to vaccines for the same reason. The downside is that women also tend to carry the burden of autoimmune disease. So things like lupus don't really affect men all that often. And that's sort of tied into this same kind of hormone and chromosome function that we see happening here. And it's also not entirely straightforward, the effects of this. So we know, for instance, that when it comes to influenza, um, you know, women can to assert in some ways fight off the bug better but women are also more prone to the kind of autoimmune chain reactions that can actually lead to worse health outcomes during the reproductive years and that's not what you'd expect necessarily if you're just thinking from a framework of you know female hormones equals healthier it's not necessarily that simple right so estrogen does the job of sort of 
unlocking parts of your immune system that might otherwise not have been active, but it can create too big of an immune response almost. So yeah, then your own can. body gets hurt in the process. Right. Yeah. And kind of the downside to this for men is that they're more prone to certain types of cancers because they're not fighting those things off with the immune system when they start. Got it. I think one of the things that's interesting here also, though, is that there's almost no research on what how these immune responses work in people who are intersex, who are born with like X, X, Y chromosomes or, you know, different kinds of hormone, um, hormone expression and genetic expression than kind of, you know, your average person. And we also haven't really done much research with what happens with this immune response when trans people are taking hormones to have you know their gender and sex match up better there's not really any studies about that researchers told me and so that should sort of factor in and how we think about this as well because without that research we don't really know whether for instance you could protect men against covid by giving them an estrogen patch we don't really know that that would work um, we just haven't done the research and we haven't included the people in the research who would be able to help us know these things. Right. This is still a pretty understudied area in some ways. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we do know. It's not a complete mystery, but there's a lot of things that we just haven't looked at some of the questions that should be there. Right. Right. So I know you also mentioned behavior potentially playing a role. I mean, we no longer live in a society where women stay at home and men are like the sole breadwinners of a family. But many of us still, you know, exist in the world in a somewhat gendered way. So how might those kind of social or cultural behavioral factors play into who's getting sick and who isn't? Yeah, so it's not just biology. It's also sort of how your gender expression plays out and the choices you make because of that. So for instance, we know that women are significantly more likely than men in the US to wear a mask. Um, and men are significantly more likely than women to do things like sign up for vaccines or pharmaceutical treatments. So there are these kind of differences in how different groups of people behave that aren't genetic. They aren't biological. They don't have to happen that way, but they do because of the way that we express who we are. Right. And this is research that's been done uh, for years before COVID-19, right? Like wearing right, masks yeah. or getting vaccines. That's, I mean, obviously there isn't a vaccine for COVID-19. So this is, this is research that's sort of been done over many years, not just in the past few months. Right. A lot of this research comes from influenza um, and kind of looking at that. There's also a lot of research around the, um, the AIDS pandemic. Can you give me some examples of how this might kind of be playing out both in the U.S. and maybe abroad? So, for instance, in China, when we first started seeing some of these really big differences between death rates for men and women, you know, people start were talking about the fact that there's huge differences in smoking rates in China between men and women. So almost no women smoke and you know, something like 65% of men do. And that can have a big impact on how you survive a lung disease, right? So we have these things that are happening and there's probably not just one cause behind them. And there's probably not just one easily replicable thing that we can transfer to people to protect them. It's probably gonna be a combination of things. And we're gonna learn more about that as time goes on. What about here in the US? Are there any sort of cultural or behavioral reasons that we might be seeing more men die of this disease? I don't know for certain about that, but I know that in the US, one of the things that has been noticed is that when you look at healthcare workers, uh, women are getting sick way more frequently than men among healthcare workers. And some of that probably has to do with the fact that women are more likely to be nurses, that there's this huge gender difference in nursing um, compared to other medical professions. 
So that's probably one part of it because nurses are the people that are touching patients most frequently, that are dealing with patients in ways that are more likely to expose them to something. The PPE isn't always sized with women in mind, that it's kind of a lot of it designed for male bodies. And so you're finding cases that have been reported where women are trying to fit masks that are too big onto their faces. And that leaves gaps and that leaves them less well protected. So even though men are dying more, it's also not necessarily always men who are most at risk of COVID-19. And that has a gender factor built into it as well. Well, Maggie, um, I know there's still a lot of mysteries here. Um, So as you keep reporting and you find out more, um, I would love for you to check back in and tell us what you find. Yeah, will do. 